Okay, now this is the uh, derivation of the classic first order decay equation. So we'll title this uh, derivation of the first order decay equation. And keep things as neat as possible. We'll embellish the presentation with a few ruler lines like this. Uh, show what's going on. Now, what we're going to do is assume a reaction going from some reactants to products. Reactants will be A, whatever they are, decomposing, say, to products. And this is going to be a first order kinetics decay. Decay problem. Right now, the trend that we will be looking at will simply follow a decreasing concentration as a function of time. So we have uh, molar concentration on this axis, which is, of course, molar concentration of A. Now, in our problem, our derivation, we're going to assign this point as A sub O and, say, a point further down the uh, y-axis as A final. Now, in the first order decay, you will see a trend that would follow this path. Shown here. Now, the point at which, or time at which we have a final would be along this line found from A to the curve along this line and down to the time axis and time say uh, final where t initial time would be at zero seconds so we're going over a period of time, TO, T final, the concentration of A has decreased from an initial A sub O to some arbitrarily chosen uh, final time. Now, the distance, of course, between A sub O and A final is your change in uh, concentration. So I'm going to designate a little section in here just to remind us of that change. So I'm going to come over here and 
and specify that change the blue line just for emphasis so this would be the change in the concentration of A over time specified. Right, right there. So now we want to establish the or derive the uh, classic first order decay equation. And it goes like this. We, since we're talking about uh, kinetic rates and kinetic decay, let's start out by defining the rate of decay of this reaction. So that is rate is simply a change in concentration of A over a change in time. Now this needs to be negative indicating a decreasing uh, kinetic rate. So as the, the fastest rate or point of fastest rate is right here at time equals zero as time just greater than zero, slightly greater than zero. Okay. Now the rate that we are considering is an instantaneous rate at a given point in time. So at this point our equation is defining an instantaneous like that. And so it is being expressed in this context right here and defines rate of reaction. Now it whatever this instantaneous rate is depends on where along the curve we choose to establish the point of interest. So this rate then is really proportional to wherever you find that concentration of A at some point in time T final position, whatever, wherever that may be. Now, it, proportional equations are empirical in nature and need to be set up equal, left side equal to the right side. And we do that by incorporating a proportionality constant. So we have minus change in the concentration of A over change in time, which is the uh, rate of the reaction, is now equal to this proportionality constant times the concentration of A. Now, this is the expression we want to uh, work with to derive the first order kinetic equation. Now using calculus terminology and calculus uh, mathematics applied to this, we need to uh, change this e equation expression into calculus terms and that would look as this where we have a D concentration of A divided by a DT, that'd be negative, is equal to uh, K times concentration of A. And in, in essence, this is just simply saying the same thing, but we use in the uh, letter D, lowercase d, indicating change in A with respect to change in time. The next interest is to uh, move the negative sign to the right term, uh, the time d dt to the right term and the concentration of A to the left term and then we'll integrate. Okay, so we will divide both sides by a minus, minus one, uh, multiply both sides by a dt 
and divide both sides by the concentration of A, giving us a DA over concentration of A, wherever it might be, and that's equal to a minus K times T, right there. So now we want to uh, integrate this equation and we'll integrate this from uh, initial concentration to some final concentration here over this distance in the y-axis for dA over the concentration of A and that's equal to a minus integration of a constant is the constant so I'm just going to pull that out and integration of dt like that an in individual variable move this up a little bit right there now the integration of the dA over a is or leads us to the natural log of a actually this is integration of 1 over a dA and we're going to evaluate that from a sub o to a final and that is going to equal a minus k integration of dt is just simply t like this and from here it would be um, a final minus a sub o when we evaluate this term so that'd be ln of and that is now equal to a minus kt the expression here ln af final concentration minus the natural log of the initial concentration can be condensed and com expressed as a ratio of a final over a o equals uh, minus kt like this ln of a final divided by the initial concentration this initial concentration is move that up a little bit here so oh, right there yeah that looks a little better don't we'll get so crowded and that's equal to a minus k t well the natural log the analog of that is expressed in terms of the uh, e function it is that is the e is the base of the natural logs and so we can rewrite this equation as a f divided by a sub o to equal e to the minus k t multiply both sides by a sub o we obtain the classic uh, decay expression right here now typically you'll find the expression written simply as AF or just A equals A sub O E to the minus KT without the embellishments of subscripts F the brackets indicating molar concentrations and typically those that work with this understand that the uh, item units will be molar concentration now this particular expression or the way we're expressing it we have done so for the interest or intent of relating to changes in concentration 
but any process, physical or chemical process, that follows a first order decay trend when you're considering a change of a y variable over a change of an x variable, typically time variable, change in time, uh, will follow this expression. One is radioactive decay. And that is frequently expressed as uh, final activity or radioactivity uh, as compared to the initial radioactivity, radioactive decay, okay, uh, at some time t in the future. So we have uh, a radioactive sample with, uh, uh, when it was at one point in time, would have an AO activity and after a period of time would have an A final. So the point I'm make, trying to make is that this curve, while we are using it for studying chemical reactions, can be applied to other scenarios such as radioactive decay process. We'll see that when we more detail when we get to the uh, study of half-life, uh, uh, radioactive decay. Now, the associated with this is the half-life equation. So now we want to take a look at the derivation of the half-life equation. 